Babylon. Hi there, welcome to the Babylon Young channel. Now I've got a bit of repair work to do on some items, starting with my bag. Now this one, this one here. This. Now when I made this bag, this was my prototype, as it were. Call it, call it that. The first one I made like this, and. There are a few things I didn't really consider or wasn't sure about when I made it and one of them was these metal um, magnetic clip things. These I just sort of pushed in and they got some clasps at the back you push over and it holds it in. I didn't really put anything behind them and I've learned that they do need a bit of something behind them to help hold them in position and stop them flexing and, and moving about and I didn't on these ones when I put them in so it's the I don't know if you could be able to see this but the the thing is actually tearing the material so it's all starting to come apart so somehow I've got to try and undo these take them off and then redo this flap bit now I don't want to take the flap off because the whole thing is fixed on down under here um, and the, the the inner zip is part of that that stitching in just so I could be able to get into this where this flat bit has been actually secured so really the main thing I want to do I suppose will be to actually get a patch and put a patch on here on this bit and on this one on the inside and then fix that patch on it's not going to be straightforward because obviously I've got to secure this um, magnetic piece by folding over the, the prongs in the behind it inside. So I'm going to have a bit of a fun time, I suppose, trying to secure this. And the other thing is, is stitching it down. Now, I could use thread, but that'll sort of show up. So the only other way really to do it, where is it, is from like this piece of material that I'm going to use to make the little patches is to take threads off it and use that as my thread. It's quite coarse so it's going to be like darning in a piece I suppose. So it's going to be quite a bit of messing about with this I suppose and it's all going to have to be done by hand so I suppose I better get on with it and um, try and work this out so I can make this bag properly usable otherwise I'm going to have to come up with another solution for securing it when I shut shut the um, shut the top down to the the class the magnetic class so mm, yeah um, difficult repair coming up here we go right first things first better empty this bag out get all the rubbish out because it's full of stuff. And now I can have a look at the situation on this. Um, yeah, that is really quite a hole in there. So, and that one is not quite there. We're not far behind it, I don't think. So, first of all, I have to try and get in there carefully and um, try to undo that clasp so I can get the actual clip bit out. So part one, that'll be first things first. Well, I've got a few tools, so hopefully these will help me to get these out without too much of a struggle. Well, let's start with something like this. Got to lever this up. Hmm. Uh, mm. Don't know if that's like to break. Get that opened up so I can pull that off the front, take the little back plate out. Same on the other one. Now, this one isn't quite as badly um, gone, so I'm going to actually have to um, snip that 
bit there. I suppose that's the trouble with this bag is that when I made it I thought, oh this material would be great, it's really hardware, and it is hardware, you know, where's no things on there, that's a really tough hard wearing material, but where it's um, got a bit worn, um, like with the um, edges of these clips, that's where it, that's where the problem starts. Right, hopefully get into that one now. I don't know if there's a better way of securing these or it's a more secure way of actually bending them over, making them work a bit better, but I just did what I thought was right at the time. So they're now both out. So part of the solution to fixing this is to have a couple of patches like this that I'm going to fix on over the top of the hole and then these will go through that and then I can stitch this down and it'll it'll be two square pieces like that to help you know, um, reinforce that section and to help it a bit more I've used some of this stuff This it's like um, a really heavy duty sort of interfacing um, material that I actually got out of a set of curtains um, and they'll go in the back there and that should really give it a bit more strength in there so I need to just sew these down so they're, they're like that to form that, that square so let's get on with that Now I've got my two little um, patches made with the bit of interfacing in between and they're going to get stitched on there like so. There these two over the, where, the holes where they, they were before. Now I suppose the best way to do this really is going to be using this stuff which is actually the, the thread itself. You know, This is how thick it is. It's really quite a, a thick sort of thread really that's been that's what this is these are made of um, so it's very loosely woven and quite thick um, so really I'm almost going to have to be as if I'm going to be um, darning this um, threading onto these to, to, to fix these patches in place before I do that I'm going to have to put these back on but on onto the patch um, and that's the reason for having that interfacing to give it more strength on the back there. Um, I might even put more interfacing, so I'll put this through there and then put another piece of interfacing on the back of that so that the back of it doesn't rub against here. So there's just a bit more um, strength in there to cover it up. Perhaps I should do that, double layer. I might do that. I'm going to put some more on the back. I know it makes it bulky, but I need to protect this piece so it, it's got that rigidity so it holds this piece firmly without it pulling on the material too much. This is what happened here. This is just a single piece of material and these were just put into it without the real thought that it's going to eventually pull and cause it to give way. So hmm, yeah, first of all let's put these on and then I'm going to have to sort out trying to get this onto the, onto here in the right position because obviously I matched these up to the, um, to the, the, the stud, the magnetic part on the front of the bag so I need to get them in the right place as well so better go on with it because it looks like I'm going to be here for a while. Now that I've got my um, patches, patch piece sorted out and loads of wadding and packing and God knows what and I've got to get this big bulky thing onto here now and get these two on. Now because of the material that this is and the thread is effectively the material because just pulling some apart to um, use as thread then I was thinking what sort of needle can I use? I'm, well, An ordinary needle isn't going to work but 
I've got this. This is a curved needle for upholstery. 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 Yeah, upholstery. That's it. Let's start that word again. Upholstery. I think that's how you say it. Well, you know, comments please if you think you can say it a different way because I can't say it at all. Um, so yeah, this curved one. So it's it supposedly should work, so if I get this in here, I can get it in, turn it up, and obviously I'm going to be able to get round it a bit more easily, hopefully. So, um, and it's got quite a large eye in this, so I'm hoping it won't be too terrible to um, to thread, but it probably will, knowing my luck. Mind you, I've got a needle threader, so I'll, I'll use that. Um, which way are you meant to thread this? Because being curved, do I do it this way through? Can't. Oh, this is going to be hard. This is going to be hard work. Yeah. Um, well, that's wrecked that already. Mm. Yeah. Hmm. Um, well. Yeah. I have to have some thinking about this one. Finally finished sewing these back on um, and there we go. It looks a bit clunky and a bit rough I suppose but it's functional and it's added a certain amount of stiffness hopefully that won't wear out too quickly um, and it does what it should do now which is stick the magnets together without them falling out all over the place and tearing the bag I suppose and there you go. All done. Took quite a bit of time because of um, hand stitching these on with a curved needle, upholstery needle, um, which I've never used before. So that was a bit of a, a bit of a treat, a bit of something different, wasn't it? So um, yeah, it's on. It works. It's functional. Better film the bag back up now, I suppose, and put all my junk back in it. There we have it, one bag fixed and ready to go. Easy to undo and to do up. There you go, and as you may notice, this is my bag that I've done. I made myself, it's got a false front with the magnetic poppers on there. It's got a lovely long strap so I can have it over shoulder, crossbody or whatever they call it. Um, and it fits quite a lot of stuff in there, so I'm really glad to get that fixed and uh, make it more usable again. So, on to my next task. What else have I got to repair? Mm. So next up I have this little top. Um, just a basic cami top, but the <coughs> the hem has gone on this. It's all sagging down, it's not stitched up. Um, um, I basically pulled it and most of it's just come undone. And there's just this small section that's still not undone, so I really just need to take the rest of this hem out, give it a bit of a, an iron and get the um, crease exactly where I want and just stitch it back up. It's a simple job really, just one of those things you get left. Well, you know, you put it to one side and think, I'll do that next or in a bit or another time, um, later maybe, or perhaps another day and several weeks, months later, it's still not done, so it's about time. I got it sorted. Well I've got the hem unpicked fully so let's give it a quick iron over just to make it neat and then steam that, um, that hem. So I've steamed that um, seam back again. I mean, it was already there really. I mean, it hadn't really gone far because this is a jersey knit really by the looks of it. It's got a certain amount of stretch to it. Um, so it doesn't need to be 
double turned over, just that single turnover, and then I've just got to stitch it. Um, probably using a zigzag of some sort, I suppose. Um, see, so it's, it wants to roll this hem, this this material just wants to just wants to roll back up a little bit. So that's why I did just run this steam iron over it, iron it back flat where I want it to be. I might put a couple of pins in there just to make sure it stays in place when I stitch it. So now I need to find some thread that's going to match this. Um, yeah, what threads have I got? Let's have a look. So what's in the thread box? Well, this is a light purple, almost a lilac colour. Don't really have anything quite that light, really. I mean, I've got this, which is a dark purple. Not quite sure how well that's going to go. It'll be sort of contrasting. I've got this as well, which again is a a dark purple, but it's not quite as dark as this. But it's certainly darker than than this. Um, and really, in the way of purples, that's that's really all I've got. So the only thing, other thing that I've got might come close is this is this pink I mean I could get away with using that couldn't I I mean it's it's subtle enough I mean it's definitely lighter but it's whereas that is way too dark really yeah that's um, I mean it's an, an undergarment so really see by anybody so let's go with this let's put the pink on there that'll go well Well, I'm about ready to start stitching this. I've put a few pins in just to sort of hold this edge where I need it to be. Now this being a cotton jersey, I don't really want it to be stretching while I'm doing this. Um, now the stitch pattern is the um, three points zigzag. So it's got three, it's just three stitches as it, it, you know what I mean. It stitches a bit, does one stitch, then another, then another, and then carries on but those three stitches form a zigzag. Um, I never really used this before. I never had the need to have to use that particular um, pattern. So I'm not really sure quite how well this is going to go or the positioning or with this material, how much it's going to stretch. So I suppose I better just get on with it and see what happens really. up now and I can use this uh, top again now that the hem's been done. Now this is a jersey knit so I mean it didn't have to be hemmed up but it does look a bit neater. Um, the stitching is a bit well not brilliant I'd say. I mean I don't really have much experience of working with, um, with the jersey knits and that so I mean I suppose in a way doing a little job like this is nice experience because I mean, I've got a bit of crinkle, as it were, that's what I call it anyway, um, with this when I've sewn it up with that zigzag because obviously it wants to draw it all together and it's, it's um, and you have to sort of stretch out a little bit to get it to sit flat. But um, yeah, it's come out all right. It's made another little top usable again. So to me, that's brilliant. And it's given me a bit of experience of sewing with uh, Jersey Knit. So next task, hmm. What have I got? So next up is my coat, my ordinary everyday sort of wintery coat. It's nice and thick and warm, and it's not my big big coat because I've got another one with a hood on it that's really, really thick and wintry. But this one's my everyday coat. But on the sleeves, on the cuffs on these, they got Velcro. Now the Velcro's gone a bit, you know, wishy washy. It's not much use really so I don't like that so I prefer to have buttons on there so what I'm going to do is I'm going to put the buttons on really um, so this bit which is the bit, see that is the tag bit with a bit of um, uh, um, the hook 
part of the velcro so I want to put a, a buttonhole in that piece so that bit is going to end up with a buttonhole in it and then on the actual cuff part I'm going to put two buttons so first of all I suppose I better have a look at my button selection to make sure I've got some buttons because um, not much point in carrying on if I haven't got any buttons yet and then next stage will be to take the velcro off then put a buttonhole in and then position my buttons so it doesn't sound like too much of a job but I imagine it will probably end up taking me longer than I want but um, well I'm sure it will make the um, cuffs more usable because then I'll actually have a, a cuff that I can undo and tighten up and you know instead of this wishy-washy velcro which doesn't really do much there you go so find some buttons I think to start with now having had to look through my buttons and found some really big chunky ones too big and things like this um, I've only got one of them left which is well, I like them just on another project um, other than that it's mainly all them sort of really small things that you could use but they're not really the right size so I was looking for something more like that size which is let me get my measure there's the end there we go it is about 23 23 mil that's just over about two and a quarter centimeters for those in old money um, seven eighths of an inch um, but I've only got three of those and they don't all quite match so the next one I've got is this one which is a little bit smaller this one is um, about 18 mil and in the old money is oh, turn, the, turn the tape measure over not the button we are looking at It's more than a bit more than five eighths, but not quite six eighths. So yeah, about that. So, but I reckon that'll work. I mean, looking at the size of that, and I've got six of these, and I only need four because four's all I want. So there we go, four buttons. Got my buttons. Let's get on with it. So first part is um, unpicking the stitching and getting these two bits of um, velcro off the hook bit and the and the, and the loop bit because um, they just don't do the job. Um, I, I was going to film this and sort of do, do a bit of showing you me unpicking, but you know what? It's not going to work very well because this is a black. Well, it's a dark, dark grey sort of jacket with some black velcro on, and it's just not going to show up very well. So I'm just going to dive in there and get these off and then uh, we'll be back for um, doing the buttons well that's the velcro taken off actually it came off real easy I wasn't expecting it to come off quite that easy but it did and it just um, wasn't a problem at all and that's left me with a nice clean cuff that I can now first of all do the buttonhole so that's the first thing position where I want this buttonhole um, and do two buttonholes to start with Now I've done my buttonholes and I was just looking at the buttons and I was, well, thinking that's a black button on a black cuff looking a bit black and dull and I don't know, wasn't too keen on it once I'd had a look and these are quite thick these buttons so it makes them doing them up and undoing them not so easy unless you have a really, basically an oversized buttonhole so I had a look through my stash again and I've come up with this button get some light on that uh, me having a spanner of a time trying to now you can't really see that very well but it's got it's a different button entirely I think I've got I think I've got about seven of these is it seven eleven no eleven of these it must be off a shirt or a top of some sort and they've got this like brassiness look to them almost um, but they're a much nicer button if you've got, I don't know, hopefully that shows up, there's a, there's a contrast there, 
but it still fits in well with the uh, with the jacket. So I'm going to put these four buttons on rather than this plain black one. Get rid of that and put these on. So I'm um, better get uh, threading up and stitching buttons on. So that's all my little tasks done now. Um, the bag, the, the magnetic clasp on my bag, uh, the little cami top hem that needed doing, and the buttons on the cuff of my jacket, which I think look quite nice, they come out quite well. Got a bit of a brassy look to them, you can't really see that because they are quite dark, but uh, they are on there, there you go. And yeah, all my little tasks done. I don't think I've got anything else left to do now. Well, except for the ironing, but then there's always ironing, isn't there? Well, of course. Well, thank you for joining me on my video. I look forward to joining you on my next video. Bye.